Introducing the Lego Natural History Museum. Oh man, it's my first time having a look at the box art of this set. It looks pretty good. Holy cow, pretty exciting times. But today in this video, we are gonna be having a detailed on-hand look at this set, which is available for pre-order starting today and available for in-store purchase and also shipping starting on December 1st. That's right, it's not January 1st, it's December 1st. And it's actually gonna have a suggested retail price of 300 US dollars. While I was in Bill in Denmark, I had the opportunity of interviewing Chris McVeigh, who was actually the designer of this set. And he is gonna give us a complete overview of it right now. Here is 10326. Natural History Museum. Oh, oh my god. That's beautiful. <laughs> this is 10326 Natural History Museum. It is the 19th modular, and it is the only the second modular to use a 48 brick wide base. Now, with this modular, looking at it, you can pick out a couple of key details. The first is that there are two large floors and a roof. And another is the large white columns um, with the pediment at the top that frame the entrance. So a very iconic look for the museum. At the top, we have a roof structure that is a little bit of a European influence to it. And then we also have the two atrium windows at the top, which allow light to permeate the museum right down to the ground floor. Looking across the front of the museum, you see that we have a cherry blossom tree to give a little bit of a different color to the modular street. And we also have two banners that showcase the main exhibits in the museum. So the one over here on my left is go back in time. And this speaks to our paleontology exhibit. Uh, that section of the museum is right over here. There are several small models and uh, the main feature of the paleontology section is the brick-built Brachiosaurus. And it is so tall that its neck and head extend through the first floor up to the second floor. Explore the future. This speaks to a section of the museum over here on the top right that envisions what the minifigs of the modular street see for their future. So there are a number of small exhibits that are space focused, and there is also a larger brick built solar system. Moving down here, we can take a look at the minifigures included in the set. So we have the curator, which may look a little bit familiar to some of you. We also have two museum employees. We have a janitor who is currently washing the windows, and we have a mother and son who are visiting the museum. We also have a woman sitting outside on a park bench fe feeding birds. If you look over here, we also have included a dog. And we have a little bit of story around the dog, which you can see as it's displayed right here, is that the dog has found a dinosaur bone and is running off with it. Uh, the minifigures are posed in this way with some specific elements. And these, um, as you build through the model, I'm just gonna flip the model around. Mm -hmm. As you build through the model, you will position the dog here along with the bones and the spare pieces. And so once you're finished building the model, you can follow through with that story, take the debris out of the, uh, the little uh, garbage can and use those elements to support both uh, the bone and the character running. I noticed two more figures too, the statues. Yes. Those originated in Rivendell? Uh, they, they share the same torso as the ones in Rivendell, mm -hmm. uh, and they are just included because they, they help, I think, emphasize the grandeur of the museum. Mm -hmm. So they, they flank the entrance, um, and uh, no specific um, meaning to their design other than to kind of, again, really speak to, to, to the size and the grandeur of the, of the, uh, of the building. Uh, like I note the uh, the olive color too. And, yes. And uh, there must be a bunch of new olive colored pieces maybe. Yes, there are quite a few olive recolors in here, uh, including very basic bricks like a two by three brick. Uh, we also have a two by two corner plate and a two by two corner brick, 
as well the new 3x3 corner plate is in olive green. You can also see some of the arches here. And we have two different bricks with front facing studs. So a 1x1 brick, front facing stud, and a 1x2 brick with two front facing studs. Uh, there's also, um, not as easy to see, but down here we have a recolor in dark brown, which is the 3x3 corner plate. Up here we have the 3x3 window, cor uh, corner window, is now available in black. And on the inside of the model, you'll also find the 3x3 fence now in black as well. Oh. The 3x3 corner fence, let me specify that. Okay. So this is the inside of the museum. It's the Brachiosaurus that pops up to the second floor. Yes, and it can be removed. Nice. And in fact, you will see it on the, uh, the box shot out in front of the museum. And then a couple other items inside there as well. Yes, so in the paleontology section, we have four different exhibits beside the Brachiosaurus. Uh, we have, I'll spin it around very quickly, we have some dinosaur eggs. And then over here, we have a saber-toothed tiger skull, we have a fossil, and we have something here, which I will just call coprolite, <laughs> and put it right back. <laughs> Looks like that's, uh, it's tiered too, because the uh, center in the sections up yes. one brick. And then it goes uh, yes, and that is about, um, I think, creating some different spaces within the museum, yeah. uh, having some different levels to give it a little bit of variety. If you look closely here, you can see that we have a lab with a microscope, and over here we have the, the bathroom. And uh, the one thing that you may be thinking, having seen these small spaces, is, oh, how do I get my fingers in there? Oh, it's convenient. So we have a removable wall that lets you access those spaces quite easily. Nice. And like on the back side, you can see a couple of other details here. Uh, within the lab, you have a clock and some bones that are under, uh, I guess, investigation. And here you have some extras for the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you did the, the stairs too, with those like triangular pieces. I've never yes. seen that before. Uh, That's clever. After uh, doing a different type of stairs in the police station, uh, one of the things that I wanted to bring to this model was uh, a new stair building technique. Mm -hmm. And the motivation for that is to allow a minimal footprint for the stairs. So the stairs can actually you build it outside, and then you attach it um, to the model uh, during the building process. Um, and the one thing I like about this uh, expression is that it's very low footprint. So that means that we don't have a lot of supporting bricks yeah. that then take away from like some areas that we could use for display space or for storytelling. Uh, and to that point, right underneath the stairs here, you can see that there is a bench, and it does have a sticky donut from the donut shop. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, also over here, we have a replica pottery section, and you may notice that there, again, a little bit more storytelling. There is a, there's a pot on the floor, somebody has knocked it over, mm -hmm. and it's broken into a few pieces. Um, this employee figure it has a double-sided face, and this face is meant to express his uh, concern <laughs> about the, the smashed uh, replica pottery. Uh, it's open storytelling, so it could be the employee that actually knocked it over. Uh, it could be the dog, it could be one of the museum patrons. Um, so just a fun little detail in there. Cool. Um, here we have a geology section. So we have a geode, a stalagmite, quartz. On the wall here we have a, a brick-built poster showing a cutaway of the Earth's core. Uh, going from the mantle down to the core, and here's another fun little mini model. We have a small volcano that is spewing lava. The second floor features a space exhibit and where the minifigs of the modular street are looking to their future and trying to envision what it might look like. So one of the key things you'll see as soon as you look in the model is that there is a brick-built world map here um, along with a rocket trajectory. Um, the, the rocket is right next to it, or, or there's another model of the rocket right next to it. And I guess if you look at that closely, you may notice it looks like something else. On the other side over here, we have an asteroid, and we have a telescope. And I'll quickly flip this around so you can see the brick-built solar system. 
That's cool. And finally, with the space exhibit, this is this is what the minifigs of the modular street are really sort of. Um, I guess they, uh, they're they looking to their future and they're trying to imagine what that might be like and what a moon base or a base on another planet might be like. So, of course, in this section, you'll recognize um, uh, a couple of little mini models uh, from, from classic space, including the command center. There's one of the buggies and what I believe is the smallest galaxy explorer yeah. um, I've seen uh, with two parts. Yeah, two part <laughs> galaxy explorer. And over here we have a section dedicated to key moments in minifig history. Yep. So we have Castle, we have Forsman, and we have Pirates. And just to kind of flank the exhibit, we also have a anchor on the wall here speaking to uh, the Pirates theme. And so now I can actually put this on here and show you how the Brachiosaurus fits through to the top, just like that. Uh, the roof again, two two atriums that allow a lot of light, natural light, to actually go into the model. And uh, this is a curator study. You may notice there's also a skylight on it, where you can look down and actually see his typewriter. But for access, the entire back panel comes off, so that you can put the curator in there and have him work at his memoirs, um, surrounded by. Um, various different items um, from his career, uh, including two awards that he's won for his cinematography. When I was sitting down to design the model, uh, the two first things that I tackled were the column technique and the stairs. Mm. And the column technique, I, I actually considered straight up using the same column technique that we used in the uh, town hall. But we really needed something a bit bigger, something that had almost a three by three footprint that you can see. Um, I've used the three by three circular tile here. So this technique was, it's actually pretty simple um, and fairly easy, uh, fairly easy to build. And then it just, and that's that. Nice. Another technique that I was happy and I, uh, happy to use and uh, something that I think that I like to do when I can is build the things in sections and then kind of add them on. Um, and this, the pediment is very much like that. The pediment is a separate build that you then stick on the front. And it uses a technique that I, I guess I'm fond of using, which is uh, kind of double articulation through Technic beams. Very cool. So yeah, you can you can just pop it on and then sit sit them down like that. Um, and this is one of the techniques that uh, yeah, I think it's, there's something satisfying just about doing that and then being able to put it onto the uh, the rest of the modular. What made you go with uh, or the Lego like, go with the museum this year? I think the museum is something that's always been just there in the background. As yeah. something that we all wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just a question of timing, and uh, this year was the right time. Uh, there was no question about whether or not it would be 48 modules wide. Um, when we were talking about a museum from the get-go, it was going to be 48 modules wide and the same footprint as Assembly Square. So it's actually the biggest modular building ever created, right? Um, piece count by, by piece count wise, yes. Uh, it is 4,014 parts, which I think is 10 parts more than Assembly Square. So, oh my gosh, pretty exciting times. Hey, everybody, I cannot wait to cut the tape, get building, and then place this thing in the LEGO City. Holy cow. Hey, I had the opportunity of asking him, what do you think of a LEGO hospital? And he said, I have no comment. <laughs> so I'm guessing that means that maybe in the future we'll probably be getting a Lego hospital, but it seems this year we've got the Natural History Museum. Hey, please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff, and have yourselves a fantastic day. Farewell!